Hi, and welcome to our session on what's new in Android development tools. I'm Jamal, the Director of Product Management on the Android Studio team. And I'm Tor, the Engineering Director for Android Studio. Today, Tor and I will talk to you about three things. First, I'll walk you through some of the features you may have missed since we last spoke with you. And then Tor will give you a demo of some of the latest features. And lastly, I'll conclude by going over a few additional product updates. Okay, let's take a look at the roadmap. First, we will talk about Android Studio Flamingo that we released to Stable just the other month. In this release, we launched Traffic Interception as a new addition to the Network Inspector. You can now select a time range in the network timeline and create rules to inject network headers, status codes, and more. Next, we added themed app icon preview to our design tools. You can choose from a number of pre-selected dynamic backgrounds and preview how your themed app icons will respond to wallpaper changes on Android 13 devices and higher. And lastly, SDK extensions allows Google to add APIs to a public SDK. You can utilize these APIs in your apps to provide additional functionality that wasn't originally available in the SDK, like Privacy Sandbox and Photo Picker. As you develop, Android Studio Flamingo has lint support to help you choose SDK extensions correctly. Overall, this was a smaller release, but packed with quality enhancements, such as an update to the IDE to be composed first, which includes new project templates to be Jetpack Compose and Material 3 by default, plus a host of smaller quality improvements to make development for Jetpack Compose even easier. Now, alphabetically, this brings you up to speed to our latest releases, Android Studio Giraffe Beta and the Canary release of Hedgehog. Before talking about these, I'll have Tor give a quick demo of some of the tools in action. Thanks, Jamal. Let's jump right into it. So the first thing I want to show you is our Target SDK migration assistance. Here we have an app which is not targeting the latest SDKs. There's now a quick fix which analyzes your app and then creates a customized set of steps to follow. So here you get detailed guidance on how to update your app. We've had these steps documented on our website before, but here they're integrated in your IDE flow. And more importantly, this list is shorter than the online one because we analyze your app and we filter out steps that don't apply to your code base. We even add some helpful links to point you to relevant code locations, such as where to update this Bluetooth permission. All right, let's talk about Compose. Jetpack Compose is production ready. And in Studio, for new projects, it's now the default. We're also switching the default build script language over from Groovy to the Kotlin DSL. And we've continued working on making Compose Preview more reliable and faster. Here, the previews are packed in a grid layout, and I can see how this screen adapts across device classes, like foldables and tablets. And now let's run this app. For that, I'm going to connect my phone to the computer. And as soon as I do, I get the new device streaming window in Studio so I can put my phone down and interact with it directly from within the IDE. So we'll run the app. Here it is. And let's click on an email. One of the features we're working on is an integrated layout inspector. So I can click to launch it from the toolbar. And within four or five seconds, which is much faster than before, we now get the view hierarchy and I can inspect the live UI, and I can click to select a view, and I can even alt-click to jump to the corresponding source in the editor for the app running on my phone. I can also start editing my code. So for example, I'll uppercase the email text, and when I hit the Save Keyboard shortcut, Control-S, Live Edit kicks in and nearly immediately updates my code running live on my phone. OK, now I'm going to click on the Reply button to trigger a crash. Yep, the app died, so I have a bug in my app. So let's open up Logcat to take a look. So here's our crash, and there's a new feature where I can just right-click on this crash and ask for Studio to explain what this error is. 
And this opens up StudioBot, our new AI-powered chatbot, which is directly integrated in the IDE. So here we're talking to a large language model, and we're getting an explanation for what this crash is and a description for how to solve it. Notice also how it's recognizing and highlighting code snippets, like this manifest XML fragment. By having this in the IDE, it's following my own color styles and theme preferences. By the way, you may have noticed that this whole IDE looks pretty different, and that's because I've turned on the new IntelliJ UI, which you can find in the Settings dialog. This is a fresh, more modern look for the entire IDE, where everything is more streamlined. The toolbars and the window layout have been reworked, we have new icons, and there are new editor colors with a bit more contrast. It took me a couple days to adjust and get productive with it, but now I like it so much that I can't go back. Anyway, back to StudioBot. In addition to getting answers, in Studio, we're enriching the answers with local smart actions. So for example, here we're being told that we need to add a permission to the manifest. And to do that, I can just click this button. This locates the primary manifest and merges the XML fragment in, adding it in the right logical place in the manifest. We can ask StudioBot to generate code too. Let's try the following query. Write a data class for a Cartesian coordinate with plus and minus operator methods. Here it's written a data class for us, and it's also giving us some usage information. One thing I can do is click to open this into a playground. And let's also open up the usage examples in the same playground. And now when I evaluate this buffer, I can see, for example, that the addition method is working correctly. But let's not test it manually. Let's have StudioBot write a test. So write a unit test for this. This is a follow-up question to the previous one and it understands that I'm referring to earlier code. And here's our unit test with tests for the coordinate methods in the earlier answer. So let's go and actually add these files to our project, not just a playground. So first, I'll add the class. It puts that in the source tree with a package. And then I'll add the unit test. Notice how Studio has figured out that this is a test, so it's added it into a test source set. And there's something else subtle going on. The code snippet from the large language model doesn't have any imports. This is something we've done in Studio. We're figuring out how to resolve imports by using our available code indices in the IDE, as well as a symbol database for well-known libraries. And we're adding the implicit imports on the fly so that the code works out of the box. So let's try this code. We're exploring some local IDE actions. So I'll set a breakpoint on line six. That added the breakpoint, and then we'll say debug this test. So this finds out that I'm supposed to be running the coordinate test and launches it. The last example I'll show is how to use the assistant with naming. So suggest a better name for the coordinate class. So here are some suggestions. I do like point better than coordinates. So let's trigger a renaming for this. This triggers the IDE refactoring, pre-configured with the right selections. And I can apply the refactoring, and here it goes. So that's StudioBot, which we're actively working on. And it's pretty exciting to see how much it can already do. And with that, I'm going to pass it back to Jamal for some more updates. Now that you have a sneak peek of some of the tools in action, I have a few more feature updates to share with you. Previously, we released the integration of Firebase Crashlytics in App Quality Insights. Crashlytics typically requires you to instrument your app to get deeper insights. To add to this integration, we are excited to launch the integration of Android Vitals. All you have to do is publish your app on the Google Play Store, log into Android Studio, and open App Quality Insights to access crash data from a broad set of devices so that you can improve the technical quality of your app right in the context of your IDE. For those using App Actions, we have also updated the Google Assistant plugin. With this plugin, you can create a preview of your App Actions for the Google Assistant and create an environment to test how your App Actions handles parameters without having to submit your app to the Play Store. Another update you don't want to miss is the new Power Profiler. 
We know that understanding the battery impact of your app on a device can be tricky. Our previous energy profiler approximated the impact based on a mathematical model, which was close, but we wanted to do better. To that end, we updated the power profiler so that you can visually see the power consumption of your device all the way down to the hardware component level, with your app running on either the foreground or background. Next, the Device File Explorer. In the latest update to Android Studio, we updated the name to Device Explorer, moved File Exploration into a tab, and added a new tab called Process, which allows you to see all the running processes you have access to, attach a debugger, or force quit a process to test how your app reacts. For those developing for Wear OS, we have a few exciting updates. Alongside the release of the Wear OS 4 emulator with Bluetooth support, the updated emulator also allows you to run watch faces built with a new watch face format. With this new XML-based format, you can just define the look and corresponding resource, and Wear OS will take care of the rendering. You can get started with watch face format by using Samsung's Watch Face Studio. Now, moving on to build. We are expanding the support of Gradle managed devices by integrating with Firebase. Instead of only relying on local devices, you can now deploy your automated tests to a hosted set of devices in Firebase Test Lab using this new Gradle DSL API. And if you're working on large sized projects, you do not want to miss enabling Gradle configuration caching. Using this feature allows the build system to record information about the build task graph for your app project and then reuse it in subsequent builds. Turn it on by analyzing your build with a new build analyzer. Notably, the build analyzer will not only turn on the feature for you, but also give you an estimate of the amount of build time you will save with each suggested build change. Speaking of time savings, Square turned on Gradle configuration caching for their Android app. And they told us they saved over 5,000 hours in build time, which translated to recovering over a million dollars in lost productivity. Wow. Your exact impact may vary, but check it out. And for the last update for build, let's talk about baseline profiles. We have heard of dramatic improvements in app startup time of upwards of 60% using baseline profiles. With the latest Android Gradle plugin and Android Studio, it's even easier than before to get started. We have a new baseline profile module template and configuration in the ID. And to help in maintaining profiles, Gradle can now create multiple baseline profiles as well. And lastly, if you do find a bug in Android Studio, we have an updated logs and diagnostic tool that will generate the right set of data points we need from you to better troubleshoot issues. Once you have generated and reviewed the logs information, please attach these data points to the bug reports that you send to us, along with repo steps so that we can better understand and troubleshoot your concern. Okay, great, that's it. To recap, we showed you a range of new features from both Android Studio Giraffe and Hedgehog. From StudioBot, to updates to live edit, integration with Android Vitals, and a fresh new UI. As you know, you are able to run your project with both a stable and preview version of Android Studio at the same time. So please try out these features to give your early feedback. Thank you for watching our session on what's new in Android development tools. On behalf of me, Tor, and the rest of the Android Studio team, we hope you enjoy what you see. Download the latest update today. Thanks. Thanks.